Before we move forward with redox reactions, we need to talk about the idea of cell diagrams. And what cell diagrams are is a way of representing what is going on in an electrochemical cell uh, using symbols. And so it just basically makes it a little bit more obvious what is going on, what's the redox reaction, what's the oxidation reaction inside of an electrochemical cell. So we're going to be still using the same overall redox reaction with uh, zinc and copper that we've been talking about before. And how we put this together, by definition, the left-hand side of my cell diagram is my electrode, the anode, um, uh, that is being used for the oxidation reaction. So whatever the anode is, so be it a metal or a piece of carbon, is going to be all the way on the left-hand side. So with this, my anode is uh, zinc, so zinc is being put all the way to the left of my cell diagram. And then you put a single line, and the single line shows a change in phase. So we're going from a solid into an aqueous solution. So we put a single line here, and then you write down the solution that is in contact with the anode. And so in this case, it is zinc 2 plus. So sometimes they might write the concentration of my zinc 2 plus inside of there. So that is one half cell. Now we're jumping, jumping to the other half cell. So you show a double line, which means that we are switching to the other half cell. And then it's kind of a mirror image. And then we say it is the solution that my cathode is in contact with. So in this case, it's copper 2 plus, And then the cathode electrode itself, copper solid. So really, this is showing what is going on with my electrons. So zinc is going to zinc 2 plus to produce electrons. Those electrons are moving to copper 2 plus to move to copper. And with this, the way I like to remember it is, is if you're given the overall reaction, the metal on the left-hand side in my overall redox reaction is going to be on the left-hand side of my electrochemical cell. The metal on the right-hand side of the arrow in my redox reaction is going to be all the way to the right. And then whatever corresponding um, solution of the species is going to be in contact with that. So copper is going to be in contact with copper 2 plus. Zinc is going to be in contact with um, zinc 2 plus. And one of your skills should be is if I'm giving you a redox reaction, you should be able to draw the electrochemical cell. And more importantly, if I am given the electrochemical cell or the cell diagram, you should be able to come up with the reaction. So if I give you the reaction, you should be able to draw the cell diagram. If I give you the cell diagram, you should be able to draw the reaction. And in doing that, um, I've given you the two half reactions. You still need to bounce them for charge and add them together. But that is a skill that you should be able to do. So when I look at this, now we can start talking about the E cell for this reaction. So I have my two half reactions. I've connected them with a wire. I have a voltmeter hooked up to it. I have a salt bridge inside of here. And overall, for this reaction and for this electrochemical cell, this is the cell diagram for it. And now what we're leading into is a discussion on the two uh, half cell react, um, potentials. So how well is zinc giving up two electrons? How well is copper gaining two electrons? And the fact that those two things together overall make my E cell. So the, the equation that we're going to be using is that the E cell, the E naught cell is equal to the E naught or the cell potential, uh, half cell potential for the cathode plus the half cell potential for the anode. And how we're going to do that um, is we need to know what these half cell potentials are. So if I know what the half cell potentials are, I can come up with a theoretical E cell. And uh, one of the other things we need to mention is that when we have this not there, it means a standard um, situation. And in this case, it means that we have one molar of whatever our aqueous species, so like our zinc 2 plus and our copper 2 plus, plus when I have a not, it means that we're dealing with one molar of zinc 2 plus and one molar of copper 2 plus. So that's the concentration of these species inside of there. Also that we are at one ATM. And the reason why we do this is uh, later on we're going to find out that uh, the half cell potentials change as we change these concentrations. 
So in the beginning for our uh, basic discussion, we are going to stick with the fact that we are dealing with a one molar solution and that is what the knots mean. And uh, you can kind of get this idea that really the overall cell potential is related to um, the ability of one species to give up electrons, the other ability, uh, the ability of the other species to gain electrons. If I combine those two things together, I get the potential for the electrochemical cell to work. And so we need to go in and start looking at these half cell potentials. And this is kind of interesting that how do we start this out uh, when we have no base and how we're gonna do this and we'll talk about this next is we do this by creating a half cell that we assign arbitrarily that E naught is equal to zero. And this is gonna be important because when you look at say a table that has these reduction half cell potentials, every one of those half cell potentials are based off the idea that this half cell that we're gonna talk about in a minute is E naught equal to zero.